This tutorial is about evaluating websites. It will explain domain endings for URL addresses, and it will provide steps, or the A, B, C, and D, of website evaluation to determine if a website is credible or not. Before we begin, have you ever been tricked by appearance? Maybe something you thought looked good turned out to be not so good. Well, sometimes websites can be the same way. Take these websites. Based on their appearance alone, which do you think is the professional website? Website number one or website number two? If you picked website number one, you're wrong. While professional in style, this site is actually a fake site, giving out far from accurate information. But how would you know that? This is where evaluating websites comes into play. One of the first steps in evaluation is understanding domain endings. Domain endings are simply what follows the period in your URL address. The main domain endings are .com, .edu, .gov, and .org. .com domain endings are commercial sites that are usually trying to sell you a product or a service. They aren't the most reliable websites in terms of researching a product or a service. So if you wanted to know the side effects of Botox, you might not want to visit a .com Botox site. .edu are educational sites such as universities and public schools. Be careful when you're on these sites as many colleges and universities provide free web pages for their students. You wouldn't want to be citing a freshman college student's website about cancer, would you? But you can find lots of credible information on these sites from faculty and researchers. .gov are government pages. These are great sites to visit when you need reports over certain drugs, laws, and so forth. Back to our previous example, if you wanted to know the side effects of Botox, you might turn to the Food and Drug Administration's .gov site and look at their research over the drug. .org are organizational sites, and while they sometimes provide loads of information, be careful. Organizations have their own personal missions, so if you wanted to find information about gun violence and safety, the information you find on a pro-gun organizational site compared to the information you find on an anti-gun organizational site could be different and potentially biased. Now that we understand domain endings, let's look at some of the steps, or the A, B, C, and D, of website evaluation that you need to go through in order to determine if a website is credible or not. One of the first things to look for is the site's authority. Who is behind the site? Why do they have the site? The best way to do this is to locate an About Us or About Author on the page. This link should lead you to a page that will detail an author's credentials for posting the information you're reading. If you're looking at a .org site, here you should find not only the organization's name, but their mission. All of this information is necessary not only to understand if a website is credible in terms of accuracy, but also the site's potential bias. Have you ever been on a website in which the content was obviously slanted, or maybe the page consisted solely of hyperlinks to buy items? Here is a WebMD entry about asthma, and while the page shows that the information for this entry was reviewed by a licensed medical doctor, you might also notice that at the top of the page that the website's advertiser is an asthma medication maker. Here, you might start to ponder whether or not WebMD's content could be biased in nature due to their site's advertisers. Next, look for the currency of the site. When was the last time the page was updated or the article on the website written? While copyright date isn't too important with sites relaying historical information, currency is especially important with sites relaying rapidly changing information, such as legislation news or medical information. Medical sites' currencies are extremely important when researching current health epidemics, like influenza outbreaks. Finally, look for the documentation. Quite like when you're asked to cite your sources for the papers you write in college, where is the site pulling its information? Are the website sources listed? If you're looking at a website that is talking about cancer treatment and so forth, where is their information coming from? Is it in-house research? Is it research from a university? If a site doesn't provide its sources, that may be a sign of trouble. 
with this Amnesty International report, they actually do list their sources. So you may want to go back and look at these sources to make sure that Amnesty is being true to the original source's information and not slanting the information to fit in with its organizational mission. So here you have it, the A, B, C, and D of website evaluation. Authority, bias, currency, and documentation. Should you require any additional assistance, please stop by the Library Assistance Desk on the first floor of the library or call us at area code 405-682-1611 extension 7251 or visit our Ask a Librarian page to find out more information about how to email, chat, and text with us.